from newstalkzb.co.nz. First, for breaking news. Well, I was born in Christchurch, yeah. Um, I lived most of my life in Timaru, but I've still got friends in Christchurch. Uh, I was back there in September, the day after that earthquake, and I saw what was going on then, and it was pretty horrific. Um, but as we start out by saying, no, li no life uh, loss, so that was good, yeah. But, um, yeah, Christ is a great place, you know, great city, and I loved the old buildings, you know, around Cathedral Square and around, um, around the university, and, and, but they're just, they're gone. My initial reaction actually wasn't much, because we had the first quake in September, and at that point it was in the early hours of the morning. So there were no people around, there was damage, sure, but no loss of life, and not much in the way of injury. The news came through, obviously, at around 12.51, 12.52 on that day, and there had been aftershocks, of course, so we'd already uh, designed our program for the day, we'd talked about what we were going to do, and we said, well, what do we do here? Is this just another aftershock? We just thought it would be another aftershock. And so we didn't actually think much about it at that, at that moment. And then I guess it was oh, three or four minutes after that, when reports started coming into the newsroom, Danny was taking calls on air that it dawned. And then I thought, Jesus Christ, middle of the day, lunchtime, people, traffic, buildings falling down everywhere, this is big. At that point we had lined up, we were going to talk to the Prime Minister, Civil Defence, the Mayor and so on and so forth, uh, and get a picture of, of what was going on. But again, the best source of what was going on were the folks out there in Christchurch who had their mobile phones, who could give us eyewitness accounts. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't an easy afternoon, I've got to tell I've got to tell you, it was quite difficult. But um, a lot more difficult being in Christchurch obviously. Yeah. Uh, first, I want to see the uh, political agendas in Christchurch end. It seems to me that there are too many factions in Christchurch that people are trying to sack the mayor, sack the chief executive, councillors are fighting each other, they don't know which way they're going. And I can understand that because of the frustration. I mean, hell, we wouldn't know what it's like to live in these conditions. And they've got, they've got thousands of people out of home and they're wanting this, that and the other thing. But they will never move forward unless they get some cohesion. And I see some political agendas in there, not just local body politicians, but national politicians trying to manipulate the whole thing for their own means. So, get rid of that. Future of Christchurch, the rebuild I worry about. I'm not sure that this is going to happen quickly. In fact, you know, it could take a couple of decades. How they rebuild the city, I've got no idea because, you know, if they can't get businesses back into the central city, if they can't, um, well, they're not going to be able to build on, you know, that wasteland, isn't it? You know, where we hit the little faction. But if they can't get their act together with the rebuild, there's going to be real problems and that'll, that'll determine whether Christchurch flourishes as a city or it just becomes a backwater, uh, a sort of a, a rural service, com uh, service community, a, a township and, and that could happen, you know, it's worrying.